My scripture this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. Matthew chapter 12, beginning in the first verse. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on a Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry, and he and his companions, how they entered the house of God, and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful to him to eat, nor for those with him, but for the priests alone? For have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priest and the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Departing from there, he went into their synagogue, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus, asking, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him? And he said to them, what man is there among you who has a sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable then is a man than a sheep? So then, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored to normal like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him, as how they might destroy him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. So today, my message is entitled, Jesus, the <coughs> Lord of the Sabbath. He is the final authority the final judge and arbiter of what is good, what is right, and what is holy. You see, the Jewish people in the Old Testament had been given the law, the observations there of the law, to follow God and to live righteous ways. There were over 613 laws in the Old Testament which the Jews were obligated to observe. One of the big ones was the Sabbath. The Sabbath which God created in for two reasons. One as a remembrance of their time in Egypt and their deliverance from that but also as a way of instituting rest and worship in our lives as believers. God himself set the example, having created the world in six days, then on the seventh he rested to set an example of the order of his creation. And likewise commanded the Jews to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. This was a day that was supposed to be set aside where you were supposed to rest from your physical labors and not to do work. And instead, you should celebrate with your family the Sabbath and worship and draw near to God. 
It was a regular weekly observance along with the Friday Shabbat uh, dinner where they would gather to celebrate and remember what God had done for them and to draw near to Him. So there were various rules. And of course their Sabbath, because their calendar days run from evening to morning, the day starts at sunset and then goes to sunset the next day. So traditionally Sabbath for the Jews runs Friday night and all day Saturday until it ends on Saturday night. During this time, they were not supposed to work or, or cook or anything. They would prepare food on Friday for them to eat on Saturday so they wouldn't have to cook. And, you know, they weren't supposed to travel so far or anything like that. And so those, those were the rules. Jesus enters in to the picture because he had seen how the people had become legalistic, how they had got caught up in doing the rules just for the rules sake missing the point that there was a purpose behind the rules he and his disciples were headed to the synagogue worship on Saturday and for whatever reason they were hungry and so since they were hungry some of them stopped by the field and gathered some grain and began to eat it. You know they were really hungry. If they're eating, you know, fresh grain, I, right off the stalk. I mean, you can eat it, but you know, it's not uh, not thrilling. Let me tell you. I, um, so yeah, so they were really hungry. Now, was it lawful for them to do this? Well, as far as picking the grain, that was okay. The Old Testament allowed. For people and travelers, if there was a field, you know, like we've got a cornfield out here, if you were traveling, you could stop and, you know, grab a few ears for your hunger, and that wouldn't be considered stealing because it was understood that you were to allow, you know, the poor to glean from your fields when needed. But it wasn't that. It was the fact that they were doing it on the Sabbath when they were supposed to not be doing any work and of course harvesting counts as work even though really they were just eating and so the Pharisees all get up in Jesus face you know hey you know what, look, what are you doing out here harvesting on the Sabbath and Jesus is like really really come on <laughs> and he said to them have you not read when David, what David did when he became hungry and his companions, how he entered the house of God and they ate the consecrated bread, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those with him, but for the priest alone. Now, of course, this here, Jesus is referring to the Old Testament book of Samuel, which we read at the beginning of this uh, service. First Samuel chapter 21. We have that story, and you can go back and read that sometime in 1 Samuel chapter 21, how David and his men were on the run from King Saul. They were hiding out in the wilderness, and they were really hungry, and they went and they stopped by the tabernacle, which was at Nob at that time, and he came into the high priest and said, look, we're on the run, we're starving. You got anything for us to eat? And the priest is like, well, you know, I don't have any regular bread or anything for you. And David was like, well, how about this? The bread from the presence. You see, one of the things that they would do in the tabernacle and the temple, <clears throat> they had this three things in the holy place. One of them was, of course, the candelabra. One of them was the altar of incense. And another one was the table with the bread of the presence. And on it, each week, the priest would bake 12 loaves of bread. And then they would go and they would sit on that table in the holy place. One loaf for each of the 12 tribes. And this was meant as a symbol 
of God's life-giving presence to the nation and that God was with us at our table and whenever we gather for meals and he gives us our substance. So it was symbolic. And so then at the end of the week, <clears throat> they would bake 12 new loaves and put them on the table in the holy place. And then 12 old loaves, they'd take that and the priests would divide it up and eat it. Uh, you know, there at the holy temple. And they were allowed uh, to eat that because that bread had been holy for being there in the temple. Well, David comes in and he's starving and they've just put out the new bread on the table and they've got the old bread, old 12 loaves of bread and he begs the priest and the priest <clears throat> gives him the loaf of bread because he and his men were starving. For he knew that that would be the right thing. Here Jesus commends him. Yes, because they were in need it was okay to break the rules. Because you don't understand. The rules are meant for our benefit, not as ends to themselves. And then he mentions, have you not read the, in the law that on the Sabbath the priest and the temple break the Sabbath but are innocent? You see, because the priests are working on the Sabbath. They're making the, the holy bread and they're doing the offering sacrifices. They have to work on the Sabbath because that's their role as priests of the Lord God. But that's okay because they're doing good. They're doing helping others on the Sabbath. Jesus tells them, I desire compassion, not sacrifice. God wants you to obey His commandments, but He wants you to love Him and love others even more. Because that's really what all of God's commandments are really about. Jesus, they ask Jesus, which is the greatest commandment of the Ten Commandments? And He cut it down to two. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second one is likewise, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the whole law. You know, this is, what, this is why I came up with all the rules and everything as tools to facilitate your action and relationship with God and your relationship with your fellow men. Because just think about it. I mean, look, look at all the other commandments. Worship God, okay, love God. Don't blaspheme God, yep. Okay, love your neighbor. Don't steal. Well, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal his stuff. You're not going to take his spouse. And you're not going to covet any of his other stuff or lie about him. Wow, look at that. If you love your neighbor, <laughs> it's kind of easy to do all the commandments, right? And so he's like, guys, guys. Don't get caught up in the minutia of the rules because the rules are for you to help people. He went in to the synagogue and there was a man who had a crippled hand. And they were like, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And Jesus was like, well, you know, any of y'all got a sheep that falls in the pit on the Sabbath? Are you going to leave the sheep in there to die? No, you're going to pull the sheep out because it's the right thing to do. This man's worth more than the sheep to God. You can heal him any day of the week, even on the Sabbath, because... You can work on the Sabbath to do good. And he tells the man to stretch out his hand. And he stretch it out and he's healed. And of course the priests were all upset because he was working on the Sabbath. Now of course that's not to say the Sabbath was created for our benefit. 
we should attempt to rest. It is good for our bodies. It is good for our souls. We should worship God. We should come here and worship God. But does that mean if your friend or neighbor or family member has something that needs done on the Sabbath, on Sunday, you shouldn't do it? Absolutely not. For it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. That is the good news of Jesus Christ today and always. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our closing hymn today, hymn number 40, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Lord Sabbath is His name, the hymn says. Hymn number 40, let us stand as we sing. <clears throat> 